Good afternoon, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on Introduction to Public Key Infrastructure, Part 1. Today we're going to begin with an overview of asymmetrical encryption, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on certificate authorities and digital certificates. With that, let's go ahead and jump into this session. We will begin with an overview of asymmetric encryption. In asymmetric encryption, two separate cryptographic keys are used to encrypt data. The two keys are mathematically linked through special algorithms. One key can encrypt the data, the other key is then used to decrypt the data. The key that encrypts cannot decrypt, and the key that decrypts cannot encrypt. If the parties in the communication are not closely associated with each other, an issue arises on how to securely exchange security keys. Asymmetric encryption requires more computing resources than symmetrical encryption methods. Often, an asymmetrical encryption session is used to establish a trust relationship between two entities. It's a verification that the parties are who they say they are. Once the verification has taken place, the parties then agree upon a secret key that can be used with an agreed-upon symmetrical encryption standard. This reduces the computing overhead required for communication. In many situations, asymmetrical encryption revolves around a public key infrastructure, or PKI. PKI is a process that is used to generate and manage the two security keys that are necessary for asymmetrical encryption. With PKI, two keys are created, a public key and a private key. The public key is made known and is readily associated with a specific entity, as in the public key is known to belong to either a person or an organization. That same entity is responsible for maintaining the security and integrity of the private key. Messages encrypted with the public key can only be decrypted with the private key, thus ensuring the security of any message. PKI is established with the assistance of a certificate authority. With that, let's move on to certificate authorities and digital certificates. There are different types of certificate authorities. The first one is the public CA. It's a third-party entity that is in the business of issuing, as in selling, the digital certificates that are used with PKI. A public CA is useful when there is not an existing trust relationship between two parties that require the use of asymmetrical encryption. Many applications automatically trust certificates issued by public CAs, as in Internet Explorer or Firefox automatically trust certificates issued by a CA like VeriSign or GoDaddy. The public CA has the power to revoke an entity's digital certificate in cases of fraud or a security breach. Then there is the private certificate authority or private CA. This is the process that is used when an organization creates its own PKI. The organization self-signs its own digital certificates that are used to support asymmetrical encryption. An advantage to the private CA is that the organization doesn't need to pay for each individual certificate. A disadvantage to the private CA is that it may be difficult to get other organizations to accept those self-signed digital certificates. There are different levels of certificate authorities. The PKI model requires that there be a hierarchical structure to the certificate authorities. The first CA to be installed in PKI is the root certificate authority. The root CA issues digital certificates to all other CAs that are installed in the PKI model. These additional certificate authorities are called subordinate CAs. By default, the root CA must self-sign its own certificate. Digital certificates are an electronic file that is used to store the public key of the entity that the certificate is issued to. The digital certificate is bound to and uniquely identifies the entity that it is issued to. 
which eases the asymmetrical encryption process used by PKI. There are some key components to the digital certificate. There is the public key. This is the public encryption key of the entity that the certificate was issued to. There is the serial number. It's a unique number assigned to the certificate to help identify it. The algorithm field is the asymmetrical algorithm used by the certificate. The subject field identifies the entity that was issued the certificate. Issuer is the entity that issued the certificate. The valid from and valid to fields indicate when the certificate was issued and when it expires. The thumbprint algorithm field identifies the hash algorithm to use when verifying the integrity of the certificate. And then the thumbprint field is the actual hashed value of the certificate, which can be used to verify that the certificate has not been altered. That concludes this session on Introduction to Public Key Infrastructure, Part 1. We began with an overview of asymmetric encryption, and we concluded with a discussion on certificate authorities and digital certificates. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you'll watch another one soon.